Today we will learn how to install FreeBSD version 10 into a virtual machine. This will work the same if you're installing it on hardware. Uh, things you need to remember is that all the data will be lost on the hard disk drive when you're going to do this tutorial. So this tutorial, if you follow it, is on your own risk because uh, you will lose all the data. To start with, when I inserted the CD and started the machine, I arrived to an installer menu. In this installer menu, we will use the easy, simple install. Uh, we are going to use an auto partitioning. We are not going to, uh, uh, to use it manually this time. Uh, I will make a video where you will find the manual settings for partitioning, but we are going to use the entire disk this time. To start with, you just select to install the operating system. And uh, after this is done, you will be asked to select your keyboard. Use your arrow keys to search for your correct keyboard. In my case, I'm searching for the Swedish keyboard. So uh, let's see here. I want uh, to have this one. Uh, after I select it with the enter key, you will be able to test your keyboard. So I'm testing my key map now. And all the keys are as I expect them to be. So that's perfect. And then uh, when you're uh, selected which one you want, you just take continue with the, with that keyboard map and press enter. In the next step, uh, FreeBSD wants us to add a host name to the machine. Um, the host name you select, uh, I normally select a host name that ends with a dot local. Uh, so let's say I want to call this FreeBSD server, for example. And then I want it to have the name dot local. So uh, for example, if you want to name your machine anything, you can do it and then we'll just proceed with OK. Here we can select the distribution set and um, it's there are some things in uh, which you can include or exclude here. Uh, if you like additional documentation, just uh, press uh, the space bar and navigate, of course, with your arrow keys. So if you want to have the documentation installed, you just press the space bar and it get marked with an asterisk you can see over there. So that's how it's selected. And if it's not, it's unselected. I normally want to have the documentation. I, uh, I normally don't want to have the games. Uh, I like to have the libraries which have a 32-bit compatibility there. I normally exclude the ports because I like to download them manually later. I will show you how to do that. Not in this video, but in another video when we install ports. Uh, if you want the system source code, it can be good because sometimes you want to, to manually compile a kernel and then, uh, and then you need a source code for this. So I select that also. I'm satisfied with all these three options and I'm going to select OK here. Here it's asked which type of partitioning method we want to use. Uh, if you're, you want to use the entire disk, then go ahead and select guided mode. If you know what you do, you can select the other ones. Uh, I'm not going to cover the other ones here. Uh, they will be covered uh, much later in a video uh, I will create. Uh, Word of advice and a precaution is that all the data will be lost if you're going to proceed with this on the hard disk drive. So please stop right now if you don't want to lose any data on that hard disk. Uh, okay, so I select the guided mode here. Uh, and I'm going to use the entire disk. And uh, this is uh, an example. It tells us how it's going to create a partition. So this is the disk DA0. And here are the partition it's going to create. And you can see what's on them. For example, it's a free BSD Unix file system. And it's mounted on the road. That will be where everything is. And it will create some additional swap and these things on two gigabyte. So I just proceed here by pressing finish. And now it warns us that all the data will be lost. So then if we press commit here, it will erase all the data. So I, I want that, so I want to commit these changes. And now it's going to install everything here. Um, I, I will pause the video and I will return the video right after it returns the next questions. So um, I'm going to make a jump in the video here. 
and after a while the system asks us to in to add a password this password will apply to the root account which is the super user of the system the administrator i'm going to type the password and then i have to retype it again to make sure that it's right now it wants us to configure our network cards uh, I believe that you want to use a static IP address but I will of course explain you how to use a, a dynamic one also but a server should always use the static IP because uh, it would be a little bit weird else to have it changing IPs and not finding our server again so here we select the network card in my case I only got one network card and it stands EM0 uh, the name of the network card is this one EM0 which means that this name can vary depending on which manufacturer it is on the network card. For Intel it's EM0. If I'm not wrong, uh, uh, real tech can be RE or something like that. I'm not quite sure. You will discover it depending on which network card you have. So here I'm going to select OK to uh, proceed with the configuration of my Intel network card. We are going to cover the IPv4, not going to use the IPv6 in my case. In case you use IPv6, I'm sure you, uh, you're comfortable with how it works and these things, so I leave it there. So I'm going to select yes. Uh, if you want to use a dynamic, getting an IP address dynamically, you can use the DHCP uh, to select yes here. In my case, I want the static one, so I'm going to select no. Now it wants us to fill out the IP address for the server. In my case, I'm going to select um, an IP like this and standard CNET and then I'm going to add a network mask I just go with the keys to navigate up and down here and default router and uh, now I can just proceed by pressing enter I don't want to configure any IPv6 in my case so I select now here DNS servers, I want to add the uh, the Google public in this case, when in this example. And just take OK by pressing Enter. Uh, here it's asked if this machine CMOS clock is set to UTC uh, local time. If I don't know, please select no here. I'm actually not quite sure in this case, so I select no. And then I can select my area, which is Europe. And then I select Sweden. Let's see if I can navigate down quicker here. Sweden. I said does that seems reasonable? Yep. And then it asks if um, we want to have additional services uh, started. Uh, SSHD is a secure shell which uh, helps us to make remotely login to the server. And this remote login is um, uh, is um, I would say it's a secure way because it's encrypted. It's made by the Open SSH team, uh, which is the Open BSD team. And you want that on, I believe, if you want to be able to remote into the server. I don't want to have a mouse pointer in the console, so I leave that one. And uh, let's say that you want anything of this, then you just press the space to uh, to se select and deselect like this, for example. But I want the SSH daemon and I want to have the dump dev on, for example. And I press OK here. I'm fine with that. Uh, now it's asked if we want to add additional users. We can add them later, so I select No here. When the installation is done, we can proceed by making some extra changes, as you can see here. But if you're satisfied with everything in installation, we just select Exit. The system will now reboot. And it confirms we want to reboot. And uh, it's asked if we want to uh, open a shell in a new window for manual modifications. I don't want that, so it's like no here. And then I reboot. So now the system should be uh, fully configured, uh, and not fully configured, but fully installed. Uh, there are some minor changes I think we want to do. Uh, some of them, the changes could be like to... Uh, uh, to make the uh, to edit the host files to make the uh, make the server being able to ping itself to reach itself as local host by the host name um, and things like that and I think I will just cover that part right now to make it already done 
when I'm going to make some uh, changes in uh, FreeBSD, I'm using the uh, the VI editor. If you're not comfortable with that, uh, you can use any other editor you like. Uh, but I really suggest that you get the hang of how V and Vim editor works because they are really standard in all Unix type system. So th it's really good to to have the hang of them. I'm going to log in with the root account now and uh, use my password and our server is installed and remember that if I type hostname you can see that my hostname is freebsdserver.local on this machine uh, what happens if I try to ping it if I try to ping that one it uh, won't respond because it's uh, it's unknown actually so to make it known uh, we need to do like this we need to edit the uh, host file uh, and then we need to go here um, I'm not sure what if you want to have the the IP the loopback IP now or if you want the real IP on the server uh, we can take the loopback for example so then I'm going to add uh, add 127.0.0.1 and I want that to be applied to freebsd server.local now I just save here uh, which I will, which it will do here is that when I try to ping freebsd server.local it will make a lookup in our host file to see does this exist if it exists in this case it's going to give back the IP we mentioned which is this one over here which is 127.0.0.1 I write save these uh, changes and I try now to, to ping the freebsd server and now it successfully answers this time. So uh, that's everything. Um, if you just want to install the server, uh, and if you so now we have a free BSD server uh, installed and uh, running. I believe that you want to be able to use the SSH daemon to be able to log in with the host name by default. Uh, wrote uh, to log in with the root, I mean on the host. Sorry. By default, uh, root is not permitted to log in on the FreeBSD server. So if you if you continue to watch now, I'm going to to let you see how you can easily make the change work um, to make the root be able to log into the to the SSH daemon into the the machine remotely. So then I'm going to use the V editor and go to etc and I'm going to go to uh, go to let's see ssh sshd underscore config and this file we are searching for permit root and when we find it we need to uncomment the hash mark here to remove it I mean to uncomment the line and then we need to instead of no we need to change it to a yes so it looks like this that's how it should look like and root will be able to log in I save my changes now and I'm going to restart the SSH daemon by going to etc rc.d and then sshd restart and that's everything now you have your machine basically configured for uh, uh, the most simple use that you should have it for um, and we were using the entire disk for this so it's just one entire partition for the root uh, for the root folder and um, so check out more videos for more tutorials they will arrive um, for FreeBSD version 10 and up uh, so uh, this is basically a clean server installed now for FreeBSD I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials